So good morning, my name is Flossie, and this is Yoga Basics, and this is class one. And we're gonna start with the tools that you have to support your practice. Now all of you have practiced before in one way or another, but sometimes what happens in our practice is we get into, just like in life, we get into habits, or muscle memory, or we just do things by rote, and then we want to take our practice further, but our muscles have this memory of, oh, this is how I do it, or our mind has this memory. And what I'd like to take from today is starting from scratch. So that's why sometimes the less experience you have, the easier it is. And uh, just a little bit of the philosophy of uh, the yoga, there's, there's tremendous amount of philosophy, but for the purpose of the Yoga Basics class, it is the philosophy of awareness. When you exercise, you exercise from the outside in. And you pump and you do whatever you do to create that stimulus from the outside in. And you, that's how it works with your stimulus and response. With the yoga practice, the gift of the awareness is the beauty because you practice from the inside out. They asked the Buddha, are you a god or are you a man? And the response was, I'm aware, I'm awake. And that's all that we ask is that you start to be awake and aware as to what's going on for you. So many times we deplete ourselves because we're, or we're doing something that doesn't honor us because we're just not aware of it. Or we mask our feelings or we mask our, our clarity with something, whether it's overstimulations or drugs or TV or whatever, and we don't feel. So I hope in this uh, series that you will learn to really feel. And therefore, you can go and say, well, now this feels good and this doesn't feel so good. Maybe I ought to alter what I do. Because the asana, the poses, should fit your body. You let the poses come through you. You don't become the pose. Do you see? We're not trying to look like the magazine. In fact, whoever's doing those magazines now, we might have to talk with them because... This is your body, and so we want to honor your body and what your body can do. And the good news is that a lot of yoga now is starting to embrace the fact that everybody is different and everybody can do yoga. But you do your own practice, and that's the important thing. So awareness, right? When you're practicing, you need to feel. And uh, that's, the, that's the practice of going inside and feeling. So the, really on your mat, you internalize and then you begin to feel. But the number one thing is you're all sitting cross-legged and we weren't raised cross-legged and that can be quite painful for a Westerner. The teachers here are yakking, we'll say talking, <laughs> and, um, and you're sitting here cross-legged saying, ouch. Well, let me show you the first secret of coming to a class. We spend most of our time either sitting at the computer, driving, watching TV, or whatever. And so there's not a lot of flexibility in our hips. We don't do things to create flexibility in our hips. And what we want to do in our practice is to fundamentally get that flexibility in the hips, and that will create stability in your spine. You want your spine always long, and you want your hips always level. So as I sit here, it's not real comfortable for me to sit up like this, because the spine is the pipeline, and a flexible spine is a youthful spine. And my other quote is, motion is lotion. Mm -hmm. So motion is lotion. All the money that I spent on lotion should be spent on the, should be spent time here really moving because that's what's gonna keep us young. So when I go to cross my legs, even though I've been practicing yoga for a long time, my body does not allow my knees to go to the floor. Does that make me less of a practitioner? 
No, what that means, rule number one is that your hips should always be higher than your knees. So how do I do that? I put a pillow behind me, I sit on the end of the pillow and voila, I'm not in pain anymore or I'm not fighting to keep my hips up in a, in a level position. So, and sometimes for some people that might even mean putting a bolster, um, a block underneath your knee. That's the whole idea, is that the spine should be upright. So in a seated position, you lift your spine and you sit up, however that is, whatever that is. And even still, it could be, some people aren't even flexible, it could be this. But as long as the spine is lengthened, we ground the spine and we lengthen it. But you can't lengthen unless you ground first. So have nice tall spine. So rule number one, hips higher than the knees, whatever that takes for you. Then we're Because then it pushes the hips forward and it lengthens the spine. And some people have to stack pretty high. Yes, and I do. I definitely have to, what I, sometimes I have to use a bolster and a pillow, depending on the day, just to be higher, right? Now we'll start with some basic breathing awareness. It's kind of funny how our life, we are taught to hurry, 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 do, do, do. And in the hurry doing, we stop breathing. Consequently, we stop living. We start, stop the life force from flowing. So we're, what we're going to do is learn how to breathe. Real simple. Now again, your, your spine being your pipeline has to be long and open. It's like a perfect. It's like a uh, hose. If I pinch the hose, then the water doesn't go through, yes? So if I pinch my pipeline I, of my spine, the life force is not going through, which is why in almost all the postures, the, the, the key is the long spine. Perfect, perfect. Um, so you want that long spine. All right, and then we breathe and the life force comes into the body and is distributed throughout the body. And we begin to become awake and aware. All right, so now we're gonna practice breathing. New way, actually an old way of breathing. And that's another thing that you can do. If your ankles hurt you, you can place, do whatever you need to do. Yeah, <laughs> do whatever you need to do to make yourself comfortable. This is not, again, that's perfect. Blocks under the knees here. All right, so in breathing, we have a long pipeline, a long spine. And I'd like you to place your hands beneath your navel right here, right like this. And in doing that, we are going to breathe in and push the belly out. So for it might feel a little awkward at first, all right? So take a breath in and push the belly out and take a breath, exhale, and pull the belly in. Inhale, belly out, exhale, belly in. Now just feel that, inhale, belly out, feel yourself fill up, exhale, belly in. Couple more, inhale, belly out, exhale, belly in. Last one, feeling it, closing your eyes, inhale, belly out, Exhale, belly in. All right? All right, so you feel that the way it feels? All right, now take your hands onto your rib cage, and I'd like you to breathe into your hands here. Inhale, breathe into your hands, feeling it. Exhale, release. Inhale, and exhale. Feeling, one more time, inhale, and exhale. This is where we breathe when we are athletic, athletic, athletic. When we are, you know, running up the steps, whatever. We're breathing here. Now, put your hands at the top here and breathe right to your hands. Just feel what it feels like. Now, what does it feel like? Huh? Calm. It feels calm, yes. However, it feels calm because we have been breathing. When we breathe to our hands here, 
This is where we breathe most of the day. Just breathe to your hands. And this is why we feel tired. We're using about a third of our lungs. We're going through the day breathing here. Now put your hands here and breathe to your hands. What does that feel like? It feels kind of choking, huh? This is where we breathe when we're stressed and angry. Huh. No wonder we get sick. We don't allow the life force to come in. So feel what that feels like when you breathe to your hands and you really limit the amount of life and breath that comes in. Now go back here and feel this again. And you can feel how it's, it's a little more than this, but it's still limiting. Now go back here and feel this. Breathing into your ribs and exhaling. You feel like, wow, feels like good to take a breath, right? And now go back down here and breathe into your belly. Fill the pitcher up and then empty it. Believe it or not, this is how we breathed when we were babies. This is how a little baby breathes. This is how animals breathe. If you watch your pet or your babies, your children, before they get learn to get stressed, when they're sleeping or when they're just sitting, inhale their belly, their, on the inhalation their belly gets big, and on the exhalation they pull back. So the idea is that your breath will measure your emotional state. And when I am aware, I can say, whoa, look where I'm breathing. And I need to, when I am stressed or I am in a yoga pose and I am trying to relax because this is the time of being relaxed, not strained. This is the time of coming from inspiration and not obligation. Not, it's not get her done. It's not power. It's flow and grace and ease. So in my practice, if I can breathe as much as I can down here, and sometimes on back bends and things like that, I will breathe up here. And that's the awareness of the breath, and that's actually something you have to learn. The other thing is to visualize the breath. I always take this visualization. When you feel the pitcher, a pitcher, an empty pitcher with water, you fill it, and you fill it from the bottom up, yes? When you empty it, you empty it from the top down to the bottom, don't you? So the same thing with our breath. When we fill our pitcher of our body, we inhale from, and it fills, and we exhale, and it empties. Inhale, you fill from the bottom. Exhale, you empty from the top. So let's try that two times, okay? You can use your hands or not. So you're going to inhale and fill your pitcher from the bottom. And exhale, empty it from the top. And inhale from the bottom. Fill the pitcher up to the top. Exhale from the top. To all the way empty the bottom. Inhale, bottom to top. Exhale, top to bottom. All right, let your eyes float open. And that is why you feel calm, because we're breathing. And this is why we don't feel calm, because we're not breathing, right? So that's just a little bit about the breath and the awareness of the breath. And now we're going to start with alignment and moving. So I know you've been sitting for a while. So we're going to start by standing up. And this particular first class is very much about the basics. And then I will, we will start to move a little bit more with the basic understanding of what we just got, breath, and now we're gonna get uh, placement of the hips. So if you'd stand up, please, and have your block ready. Now, our bodies, we want length. Remember, we talked about the hose being long. Our hose is the spine, so the breath can can, and the life force can be distributed. But right here, we have a pelvic bowl. There's a bowl there. And I always like to visualize it, that it is salad bowl, jello bowl, whatever you want. But the bowl needs to be level, so the contents of the bowl don't spill out. So if I'm standing straight up, and my body is such, 
that my bowl is not level. I might have what I lovingly call a duck butt. <laughs> and there's a duck butt because I might be pregnant with a belly and that pulls my belly, my weight down. I might be uh, genetically like this or I might be sitting all day and I sit like this, and in which case this is my bowl is not level, is it? And that's, that's almost standing is that it's not level and it should be level. So the first thing I want you to do is lift your toes up and place them into the earth and then place your front hand, one hand on the front, one hand on the back and feel if your bowl is level just by standing normal. So you might have to adjust just to get the bowl level, like I definitely do. Just to adjust to get my bowl level, to be normal, to be level, I have to do my movement. So feel your bowl to see, because in the practice, you want to be aware, where is my pelvic bowl? Where is my spine? Because if you're practicing incorrectly, as we'll see in just a second, you can really hurt yourself. And there's two ways to get hurt in yoga, not that you want to dwell on that, but you need to know it. Two ways to get hurt in yoga. Lack of attention. I'm not paying attention to what my body's telling me. And greed. I think I need to do more. And that's not the answer either. Lack of attention and greed are the way people get hurt in yoga. If you are aware of where your body is and you're not greedy, but you're moving your edges, you're doing yourself, you're really what I say, honoring yourself. So now we're going to learn how to move our hip, our pelvic bowl so that it supports our movements in yoga. So take your block and place it just above your knees and that's it. That's it. Now pick your toes up and place them into the earth. Feel your bowl to be level, whatever that needs to be. Feel it level. Now, one of the components of a strong yoga practice is that you are grounded. So without doing anything else, just let yourself stand here like la, 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 la. You know, I'm standing in line at a grocery store. I'm standing in, in what we call Tadasana or mountain pose in um, the practice or any of the standing practices. But unless I'm grounded, when I go to do something, I'm not. I'm going to be all over the place. So how, what does it feel like to be grounded? Well, I'll show you right now. Pick your toes up. You're real loosey-goosey, right? Push your toes in the earth. And very gently now, squeeze the block. And feel what just happened to your legs and the energy in your legs. It grounded you. So now, when I do something, I don't have to be squeezing to the point of I'm creating stress. But if I'm squeezing, I am grounded. You can feel it, right? So let's take squeezing without tension, but feeling that grounded. Now release the squeeze and feel the difference. We learn by contrast. And we're going to do a lot of contrast in the class. All right, squeeze and you feel grounded, right? And release. One more time, squeeze. And then take your arms up with it as it, you're squeezing. And one of the other things is when our arms are above our uh, shoulders, we want to watch to feel if I'm, no, feel it. Am I stressed? Pull the shoulders down the back. That's right. And palms face one another. There, I can be strong and powerful and not strained, <laughs> right? Okay, but feel that aliveness in your body but you're grounded in your throat. That's it. Okay, let your arms come down. Now, sometimes we want to move our pelvic bowl. We want to change from what we call a cat tilt to a cow tilt. On the East Coast, we call it dog. So you'll see me stutter, I guarantee. <laughs> um, so how about we want to take the block without bending your knees and push the block forward. Just push that block forward. So what you've actually done is tucked your tail under, right? That's called the cat tilt. Now bring the block back to neutral. Then push the block forward again. That's called the cat tilt. Back to neutral. One more time. Block forward. Feel it. Cat tilt. Back to normal.
Yes. Okay? Yes. It seems like you have to activate your glutes. Absolutely. Okay. But you don't have to bend your knees. Okay. Absolutely. That's good feeling, good awareness. All right, now let's do the cow tilt. So without bending your knees, push the block back like you're going to hand it to someone. That is a cow tilt. Come back to neutral. Push the block back. That's a cow. See, I'm rotating my inner thighs inward and back to neutral. Cow, or on the East Coast we call that stog. And back to neutral. All right, now, cat tilt. Push the block forward. Neutral. Cow tilt. Push the block back. So you want to differentiate that. You got it? Cat, block forward. Neutral. Cow block back. All right, and neutral. Questions on that? On the one forward, well, I guess I feel like I, it's a natural sway back with the, the um, which one goes back? The cow. The cow. I'm that, trying to keep my right. pelvic bowl straight, but... It does sway forward. the back, okay. because there is a time in the practice to do that, and we're going to do it right now. Yes. All right, now, when I bend in a forward bend, everybody thinks, you know, okay, teacher says, open arms, swan dive down. Where does the body bend? The body bends right here. The spine does not, is not supposed to bend here. So a lot, of, a lot of people think forward bend is gonna happen in my upper back. Whoa, is that far away, right? Yeah. But the body is designed to bend this right here. So what I'd like you to do is find your hip bones, Walk down to where your thigh meets your torso. Now, right now we have a neutral pelvic bowl, right? And our, our spine is, we're squeezing the block slightly because it's grounding us. Now, I'm going to do a forward bend, and this is where I bend. So I cow tilt, push the block back, and look what happens to my body. I begin, push into your thumbs, and I bend right here. I exhale, and then I inhale up and the bowl becomes neutral. Cow tilt, push the block back, exhale, this is where my bend happens. And I don't bend my spine, inhale up, neutral. Cow tilt, push the block back, bend, lengthen, and then inhale up. So that's why we want to know where is your hip, where, where's your bowl? Because now let's do it wrong and you'll feel it. Try to do a cat tilt. Push the block forward and do a forward bend. Uh, right? Mm -hmm. And this is what a lot of people do in class. They go, <gasps> right? Okay, so come up. So a forward bend means you have to do a cow tilt. Let's do it. Inhale, exhale, soft knees as we take it down and then inhale up, neutral. Cow tilt, lift the chest, exhale, inhale up, neutral. Cow tilt, inhale, exhale, bending, inhale up, neutral. One more time. Cow tilt, exhale, yeah, then we get that length, and then inhale up. All right, so now when do we use the other? If I'm going to do a back bend, then I'm going to push the block forward. So arms out and up, push the block forward. Palms face one another, pull that belly up and in. Push the block forward and look what happens. You can raise your chest up. Inhale up, bring the, everything back to neutral. Push the block forward, cat tilt, and push into the earth as you lift the chest. And then come back. One more time. Cat, and inhale, exhale, the, and come up. Because, let yourself come down and relax, your spine is not meant to bend here. So in a back bend, and later on in the series, we will be going into back bends extensively. But for today, you can, the back is not designed to, bind, to bend here. So if I do a cat tilt, I can protect my lower spine from bending. You see? Now, not too deep, but I want you to feel the contrast. Do a cow tilt, push the block back, and try to do a back bend. 
right? Do you see? That's why this class is so important because it gives you the fundamentals. I, how many forward bends and back bends do you do in class? And if you don't know where your bowl is, you're restricting yourself, right? So now we do some forward bends and some back bends, pushing the block forward and back. When you do a back bend, remember to keep this stable, push the block forward, and pull the heart open. But we'll do more back bends further on. All right, so here we go. Let's begin by grounding ourselves. Pick your toes up, place them into the earth. Okay? Push, gently push on that block. Now, further on in the practice, we're going to take the block away, and I'm going to say to you, pretend you have the block, squeeze the block, and you're still going to have that feeling of being grounded. All right, so we take our arms out and up, and we're still in mountain pose here, so the pelvic bowl is level. Do whatever it means to, for you to bring that bowl level, and the spine is long. So let's bring our hands together. If you can, keeping the pelvic bowl level, let's just circle the upper body, because this is going to give us that grounded feeling by squeezing the block and keeping grounded and yet letting the upper body move around. Opposite direction. Breathing. And then bring your arms down. Now just for the sake of this practice, bring your hands to our bend here area. All right, inhale, grow tall. Exhale, cow tail, push the block back, swan dive down, soften your knees so you can go down as far as it allows you to go down. And then pressing into your feet using your core, inhale up, bring your arms out and up, palms face one another, cat tilt, protecting that spine, and just push into your feet to ground yourself and lift the heart. And then inhale up, right, cow tilt. Uh, that's beautiful. And allowing for the space in the spine. And inhale on your flat back. Well, this is a flat back right here. Let's practice. This is a cow tilt. And we do this a lot in class. Flat back. So how do I get a flat back? Well, if I have a cat tilt, I'm not going to have a flat back. But if I have a cat, cow, which is dog, cow, pull the shoulders away from the ears, I can really start to get that flexibility in the hips that I need. So breathe into it here. Watch, you don't pinch your neck. So when we inhale, let's take our belly breath. We inhale, the belly gets big, and we exhale, pull the belly up and in. Inhale, belly big. Exhale, pull. Inhale, belly big. Exhale, pull. Inhale, belly big. Exhale, pull. Now, all the while here, we still have the cow tilt going. Just feel those sit bones spreading and pushing that block back. Really, It really does create the flexibility in the hips. All right, now we'll drop back down. Still have the cow tilt. Press into your feet. Take your arms out and up. As we come up, when you get about this far, to flip over. We have a neutral bowl here. Push the block forward and exhale back, pushing into your feet. Inhale up. Let's do another back bend. Push the block forward, pressing into your feet, lifting the heart as you exhale back. And one more time. Push the block forward, lifting, protecting your spine, and coming all the way up, and bring your hands to your heart center. Okay, so now we're going to take that practice down to the all fours. And I'm going to go this way, but you all still use your block until you don't need your block anymore. But on, a, on all fours, there's another, um, there's an, another component of this. When we do things in yoga, we want to do what's, be what's called stacked. And that means that I want always a joint on top of a joint for stability. It's not good to be here or here or here. Only in downward facing dog will we be out here. But the hips need to be on top of the knees and the, and the shoulders, elbows, wrists. So always remember to be have yourself stacked. That will create the stability in the poses. Especially when we get to more complicated poses, you're going to want that stacked um, alignment. All right. 
So here we go. We're going to do our same thing. We're going to check that we're stacked. Boom, boom, boom. Right? And that there's equal distance between your fingertips and the middle fingers coming forward. And the reason I'm stressing that now is because when we go to downward facing dog, we want to have these kind of hands too. All right, now let's practice. Now from here, we're going to start with a cat tilt. Push the block forward and let the movement start in your tail as you round your spine. And breathe here. Keep pulling that belly up, pushing into your hands and knees, pushing that block forward. But feel the vertebra behind in your back really spreading. And then come to a neutral spine. And then from here, we're going to go to the cow, pushing, but let the movement start first in your tail and then let the rest of the spine come forward. Heart comes forward here, shoulders down the back and look up slightly. So again, if you want to watch for a second, the movement starts in my hips. It begins with my hips and the last thing that happens is my chin goes under. And then it begins in my hips and it rolls like a wave and the last thing that happens is my head comes up. So let's practice that a few times. Exhale, as you push the block forward, it originates in your hips. And the last thing that happens is your tail, um, your chin comes under. Inhale, as you push the block back, and notice how you spread the sit bones. And the last thing that happens is the head comes up. So let's practice this a few times. Exhale, pushing the block forward, cat tilt. Inhale, push the block back cow tilt. And now keep breathing and going. Exhale. And inhale. Working your block. Work, starting with your hips. Couple more. Exhale. Push the block. Move the hips. Chin tucked under. Inhale. Push the block back. Let it roll. Let this, the wave roll. There. Okay, now we're in a cow tilt. Where to go from here? Let's wiggle our hips just to get, really just to get some movement here. And now I'm going to share something from the East Coast called Downward Facing Puppy that we do to warm up for Downward Facing Dog. In the uh, cow tilt, I'm going to walk my hands out as far as I can Remember to keep your hips stacked on top of your knees, and if you need to, put your head on the mat or pull your elbows back on the mat if that's too much of a stretch. But keep breathing to open the shoulders here, but you keep working that cow tilt. Keep opening your shoulders. Walk your fingers out so that your wrists are off the, hand, off the floor if you can. So you walk them out as much as you can. And now breathe into the sensations and feel what your body is telling you. Maybe your body's saying, relax your shoulders. That's it. And breathe and feel. And if it's available and you don't have any shoulder issues, move your upper body side to side. Just moving your body side to side. And then let's walk our hands back, all the way back, and come up on your knees. Stacked. Here, we're just, we're just everything is stacked. Hips on top of knees. Squeeze the inner thighs together. Pull the pelvic bowl level. Bring your arms up, all the way up. Again, once, when you raise your arms, you raise Palm down until you get here, and then palm up, and that helps the shoulders. Inhale, up. All right. And then take the hands behind you and grab hold of your elbows. Tuck the tail, push the block forward, and lift the heart. So you're still, you're really working this. You're pushing that block forward, and you're pulling up in your belly to lift. Trying not to pinch your neck, but open your heart here. Breathing. And then come down. All right, let's loosen up. Just relax a little bit. 
And now we're gonna to go to what's called a downward facing dog. And the reason that, that we're doing this now is because in the downward facing puppy, you, you spread those sit bones and you push the block back. Well, on the downward facing dog, that we're gonna take the hand positions that we talked about, we're gonna turn our toes under and press the block back. And everybody thinks, oh, if I do my downward facing dog, I gotta get my heels to the floor. When the reality is, remember the pipeline, the spine, you want it long. So the pads of your hands press into the earth, and if my knees need to bend to keep my um, cow tilt, so be it. Because look, watch what happens if I have a cow tilt. There's the cow. Now watch what happens if I have a cat tilt. I try to straighten my legs, I have, then I have, and I've totally lost it. You see there's the cat with the straight legs, or here's the cow with the bent knees. So the first objective of a downward facing dog is the long spine. Eventually, your let heels may come to the earth. I've been practicing a long time. They still don't really want to go if I'm wearing a lot of flip flops. Okay, so let's try the downward facing dog. But we build everything from the ground up. And I'd like you to try it and then we're going to talk about the shoulders. So take your hands out like so. And again, there's equal distance between all the fingers. The middle finger is um, the base. And you press into the pads of your hands. We don't want our shoulders to do the work here. And this is one time when we're not stacked. Our hands are out slightly forward. All right, so then we're going to turn our toes under and cow tilt, pull the shoulders away from the ears because this is going to create more tension. And then press into your hands and pretend you're going to moon the sun. Keep pressing into the pads of the hands, lengthening the spine. Look to your navel and keep breathing to lengthen and keep pushing the block back in our cow tilt. Keep pushing and breathing. Breathing and feeling your way through this and this is what gives you your sensation of your reality, of what's happening inside you. So we're, we, we don't force it, we flow. All right, now come on down, and I want you to watch for a second. So you go ahead and watch. Now, okay, I've got my long spine, and I've got my cow tilt in the downward facing dog. But now I'd like you to watch my shoulders. Let me see if my hair's in the way. So watch my shoulders here. If I'm like this, then my shoulders are really crunched and I'm putting a lot of stress on my shoulders. But if I can rotate them, look what happens. From here to here. And the stress is off my shoulders. That's why some people get shoulder injuries from downward facing dog. Because they're trying to take all the weight on their shoulders. So what we want to do, what did I do differently? I'll show you. I can show you in the downward facing puppy. And you can still watch my shoulders here. Here or here. Here or here. The rotation happened in my arms because my hands didn't move. See the elbows? We want our elbows to the floor as opposed to everybody goes elbows to the sky. In these, we want elbows as much as you can to the floor, but you can't move your wrists. It's, it's so that's why the important placement of the hands. So here is where most of that, that's really painful for elbows to the floor. And again, all of that takes flexibility and that comes with time and that comes with your practice. That's why you practice, yes. Do you want you know, the head, when, you, when I look at my belly button, I feel like I'm curving my neck as opposed to letting it hang. And, well, no, it, it should be d gently tucked under. So this is called Jalabunda, but it's a tuck under okay. like that. So you're not pinched. Okay. But that's a good question. You're, you're definitely tucked under. Your gaze goes towards your belly button. Your heart goes towards your thighs. So let's do that again. 
All right, let's build from the ground up, hands flat, cow tilt, lifting um, on the inhalation, turn the toes under, inhale, press into your hands. Let's try to rotate the elbows to the earth. Yeah, it's different, isn't it? And breathe into it. Keep, keep the knees soft if you need to. And the spine long. Chin tucked under slightly, but not close off the throat. Breathe. Keep pressing. Keep working the elbows towards the earth without straining. We don't strain in the practice anymore. Lifting the tail up, lifting the tail up, pushing into your hands. Lift that tail up. All right, and we drop back down. Let's take the block away and come to child's pose. Now, child's pose is down on your heels, and if, you can't, if you're not comfortable with that, you can put a pillow or something here, and then you can take child's pose to rest, and you can also take your block here. All right, so just resting here in child's pose, letting what we just did integrate into our bodies. Breathing and being. We are human beings, we are not human doings. So we really want to learn how to be aware when we are overextending and when we can just let go. Final moment of just being and feeling And then we'll, on the inhalation, press up and walk your hands out in front. All right. Take the pillow away and bring your forearms down on the earth. So we're actually going to do a back bend here. We're going to stack elbows underneath the shoulders. So shoulders right on top of elbows. And then walk your, hand, your body back accordingly. So shoulders... And the elbows are in as opposed to out, because watch, out, in. Now let's take a little feeling check here. Let your heels press towards one another without making your, your buttocks so tight that we're not going for buns of steel, but we are going for a supported back. Gently press the heels in. Pretend the block is there and gently Tuck the tail under or push the block forward. And feel how supported you feel in your back bend. Yes? You feel that support. Now, just for contrast, let the heels drop out and let yourself get loosey-goosey. You feel your lower spine is no longer supported. So if I'm going to be doing a lot of back bends, I need that conscious support. I need to push my heels towards one another and tuck my tail under and pull my elbows towards my waist, which pulls my heart forward. My, my shoulder blades are like my angel wings, and I'm tucking them in because I don't want this. And I don't want to wear my shoulders as my earrings. I want to push in, and that gives me a strong back bend. Now, what's missing here? Our breath. So let's breathe. Now, in this, it might be a little tough to breathe into your belly, so you breathe into your ribs if you can. Inhale and exhale through the nose. But if you can breathe into your belly, this is a most empowering and yet calming. It's kind of interesting because yoga is strengthening and lengthening and empowering and yet calming at the same time. And let's look over our right shoulder and over our left shoulder, and back to center, gaze is soft, 
as we feel our body's response and our construction, if you will, of, of the pose. And then you begin to feel the effects of the pose, which is the calmness. All right, and then drop yourself down, place your hands by your chest, and push up on the inhalation back to what's called an extended child's pose. Lengthening here, because we did a, we did a back bend, now this is a forward bend, in essence. and then come all the way back up. Now, let's bring our legs out in front because the primary focus of today's class is forward bends and a little bit of a twist. Um, take your bolster or whatever you're gonna use and put it behind you to sit up on because once again, I want myself because I'm gonna be doing, I want the long spine. So I want this feeling of length. And for me to get length, I need the support, which means I come off the edge. I'm barely on. So what it's doing, in essence, if you can feel it, it's pushing you into a cow tilt. You see your tail's coming out a little bit, which is a good thing, because we want a long spine. Tail's not coming out. <laughs> come forward just a little bit. Or make yourself higher. Yeah. All right. So in order to get our spine long, we lift however we need to lift. Now let's do a spinal twist because just to release some of what we've been doing. Bring your feet up, and this is a gentle twist, and we do a whole class on twists. We'll do a whole series on twists, but just for us to feel. The twist is the same thing as the back bend. My lower spine is not designed to twist. A twist only happens from the waist up, but a lot of people twist like this, and they're not getting the benefits of a twist. But we'll just do a simple twist here with our long pipeline. Take your left arm over your right. Take your right arm out in front. And we're going to inhale, grow tall, and exhale, go to the right. And when it's time for another inhalation, grow tall, and exhale, go to the right. So we keep going. But inhale, grow tall, that's good of relaxing your shoulders. Exhale, twist. Now take your hand right at the base of your spine on the pillow or on a block if you need to because when you inhale and grow tall, you're, you're stationary and then you turn, you twist. So you keep going. Inhale, grow tall. Exhale, twist. But you're only twisting from the waist up. Inhale, grow tall. Exhale, twist. One more time, inhale, grow tall, exhale, twist. Now feel this before we release it. Feel how it's just your upper body that's twisting and your organs are getting massaged here. Your liver, your spleen, your stomach. What a nice squeeze. And we come back to center and take a deep breath and feel it. Take a breath. And you can feel the effects of the twist, yes? It's, twists are great to release anxiety and to massage those organs. And um, so let's be balanced and do it on the other side. So right forearm, left arm, we open, we inhale, grow tall. Exhale, twist. Inhale, grow tall. Exhale, twist. Inhale, grow tall, soft gaze, exhale, twist, then take the hand at the base of the spine on the floor to lift yourself up as we grow and twist on the exhalation. And grow and twist. Soft phase, one more time, grow on the inhalation and soften and twist on the exhalation and then release that and come back to center. Now, for our lesson in contrast, let's feel what it feels like when you don't keep your spine long. So take your arms behind you just for, just for this. All right, lift up tall, 
Drop your knees to the right and look to the left. So spine is long. And then switch sides, knees to the left and look to the right. And come back. Now, slouch your spine, just drop, and twist knees to the right. Look to the left. Feel the difference? In, now straighten it. And feel the difference. And then come up to center, slouch, and then drop over knees to left, look to right, and then straighten. And feel the difference. And that's the whole key to the practice today, is that where is my spine and where is my pelvic alignment? It makes the world of difference in your energy disbursement. Come back to center. Now we'll do another forward bend here. So I have to sit back up on my pillow, taking my legs out. Now remember we talked about it, where does your body bend in a forward bend? It doesn't, it's not supposed to bend here. I'm not trying to get to my toes and in my cat tilt, they're far, far, far away. But if I do a cow tilt and I bend where it feels appropriate for me to bend, not bending my spine now, let's take this forward bend without bending the spine, all right? So let's just inhale tall, think about the bend here, cow tilt, push the block back and exhale, move forward. Pause on the inhalation. You can take your hands down and exhale, move forward. With, as soon as you hit your edge, you want to feel what my edge, what does your edge feel like? Keep your heart lifted. You stay at your edge and you breathe. And that is where you experience your forward bend. Unless the teacher says, or the practice is, and let yourself round over. So go ahead, let yourself round over. You're going to feel it in a different place. So inhaling back up, you feel the difference? If I do a forward bend with just a rounded spine and just allow everything over, just, just let yourself do that. Just feel that. And then bring yourself back up. And let's do our cow tilt with the leading the elbows to the waist. And we lead with our heart. We exhale. And we move on the exhalation. And we inhale, lengthen the spine, and exhale, keep pushing like we did in Downward Facing Dog, those sit bones wide. Inhale, lengthen, exhale, bending. Inhale, lengthen, exhale, bending. So a forward bend is the forward bend, and inhale back up. No matter if I do a forward bend standing, sitting, or lying down, which we'll do as well. So now there are times in class when the teacher will say, go ahead and round over. So let's try a variation here. Putting your soles of your feet together. And one of the things that we do in class a lot is to get the flexibility in the hips, because most of us don't have it. Um, we want to move the hips a lot. So let's just exhale, round the spine, and pull yourself away. Pull that belly in, just like we were on all fours. And then inhale. Cow tilt, pull the elbows to the waist, lift the head to the ceiling. And remember, that's that cow tilt. And then exhale, pull round the spine, cat tilt. And inhale, cow tilt. And feel, this is where we're working here. Exhale, rounding, really moving the hips. And inhale, and exhale. So you get those hips moving, and inhale. This is where we'll make the rest of the practice more comfortable. And exhale as we get more flexible in the hips, and inhale. Now, I'm technically going to do a forward bend. So I'm going to pull my elbows to my waist, cow tilt, and I'm not going to go very far. <laughs> but that's my forward bend for today. Inhale, grow tall. Exhale, bending only where we talked about, keeping the heart lifted, and breathe. Inhale, and breathe to the edge, feeling. Inhale, grow tall, and feeling into your hips. A couple more times. Breathing. Now, this is appropriate for, 
for one thing, this is appropriate for getting the flexibility in the hips and the groin, right? But now I want to release because forward bends are a great way to release, especially if you're stressed out. So now I'm going to throw all the rules out the door, which is really fun to do, and just allow myself to just melt down. Just melting down and releasing. And just feeling your edges and breathing into your edges. So use it. Keep breathing. Keep feeling. And it's about letting go. And then we'll inhale all the way up. All right, and let's release that. Let's take our hands behind us and bring our knees up. And once again, drop the knees to the right and look to the left and switch sides. And as we bring our practice um, today to a close, the, the emphasis again is on my breath, my pelvic bowl, the length of my spine. So everywhere, where is my body? Where is my breath? Most importantly, where is my awareness? So we're going to take all that we just learned and take it on our backs. So let's bring our knees to our chest. Come on your back and bring your knees to your chest and just roll around. Rolling around like you place your hands on your knees and just roll like your knees are a spoon and you're stirring to release the back. Now let's lace our fingers around our right knee and pull the, the knee into the chest and take the left leg long to the floor. If you have a bad back, you can bend the left knee like so, so it, it takes the um, pain or the, the intensity off. Or you can press the back of the left knee to the earth. And here we're massaging our ascendant colon. Very simple. Very powerful. Power yoga doesn't mean we have to kill ourselves and knock ourselves out. It's just how aware are you and how in the moment are you? Just breathe. Now we bring both knees in and wrap our arms around both knees because what this does is massage the transverse colon, pulling that in. If you can scoop your belly and lift your head and shoulders off the floor, that's an option as well, as long as it's not straining the neck. Remember, we're done straining in our practice. And then we drop our head and shoulders back down. And then we take hold of the left knee, pulling it in, and the right knee either goes to the floor or bends. And just breathe. And just be and feel. In this moment, this is all that exists, is this moment. And what kind of energy am I creating by my thoughts, by my breath, by my actions? What am I feeding my body? What am I feeding the earth? Take your arms over your head, take your legs long, and stretch and feel all your fullness. Just breathing. But even here, feel as if you can have that long spine with a level without torquing your pelvic bowl. And then bring your arms down by your side and walk your feet up to your buttocks 
hip width apart. And then from here, we're going to cat tilt slightly and push into our feet to lift our hips up into what's called a bridge pose. <coughs> Just for a counterbalance. And you can snuggle your shoulder blades together, but here we are still trying to get that pelvic bowl to be neutral on the spine. So for some of us, we have to do a cat tilt. And then let's slowly release our hands and come down one vertebra at a time. Take your arms out by your side, cross your right leg over your left, and drop your knees to the left and look to the right. We try to keep our right shoulder on the earth. And we keep that spine long because remember, we want to twist a long spine. And we don't want to twist from the bottom. We're twisting from the waist up. You may feel it in the hips. But the twist happens in the way, from the waist up. And then we inhale, come up and uncross. Take that left leg over the right, squeezing the inner thighs together, which helps the lymphatic system. Drop the knees to the right and look to the left. Sinking and peeling away the layers. Using your breath, if you can, going all the way to your belly, filling the pitcher up. Belly, ribs, chest, and then exhaling from the top down, emptying the pitcher from the top down. Let the breath be long and luxurious. And then we'll come back to center, uncross, take your legs long, take your arms over your head once again in all of your fullness. Even just this simple practice we did today, we brought so much life force into our bodies. And we peeled away the layers of stress. And now we'll prepare for the most important pra practice of all, because all the practices that we do prepare us for Shavasana, which is final relaxation pose. So here, you can take your bolster, if you want, and place it under your knees. For me, I like something under my knees, it doesn't have to be. And I also like to take my um, pillow or a blanket and place it like that and place it under my neck. So it's only one little roll under your neck, just a little roll, just a little part, so that you're, you've got a little bit of your, the bend under the neck and the rest of the head is on the pillow. And your palms can be up if you feel open and receptive. Or down if you feel you need to be grounded. Now here is the opposite of everything we've done in class. Where in class, our muscles hug the bones. And we activate and lengthen. And here we just release. So let the muscles fall away from the bones like jello. But we still see if we can maintain that belly breath because that is the breath that is by far the most effective and the most calming.
and just watch the breath as it feeds your body, but it actually feeds your heart, your mind, and your soul as well. And you feel your edges of your body begin to expand or erase. And feel the grace and ease which flows through you now. It flows through you all the time, but sometimes we're too closed off for it to flow. But as we open ourselves up, Shavasana means corpse pose, and the corpse rests in peace. Be still and know that I am. Be still and know Be still Be Gently begin to deepen your breath and bring your awareness back into your body. Wiggle your fingers and toes. And then go ahead and bring your knees to your chest and roll over on your right side. in the fetal position, just being and aware, just like the Buddha, just like all the enlightened beings, they were aware. Instead of acting by automatic pilot, they are consciously creating, they are consciously aware, as we have the capacity to create consciously. So when you push yourself up now to a seated position, up on your bolster or whatever, do that consciously creating the energy or holding the energy that you wish to cultivate in your life. We're creating a new reality now. So take your left hand, press into the earth, and come on up, consciously creating. Your pipelines are open, your connections are strong, Feeling your fullness and your aliveness. And then bring your hands to your heart center, pressing the thumbs into the heart, connecting with the most powerful part of you, which is your heart. And we say to each other, Namaste, which means the spirit in me bows to the spirit in you. Namaste.